Hello, hello, and welcome back to CGTV and more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my garden. I'm heading off now to go and see a car that has not been on the channel for quite some time. But before I do, make sure when you're buying your next car, you use car vertical. If you use car vertical, you are less likely to get stung on all sorts of nasty hidden things like accident damage, mileage discrepancies, outstanding recalls, outstanding finance, sneaky exports, and you can also see previous plates as well. So let's jump into it. Let's go. Use my code TG on the screen and you'll save some money on the report. The reports are really well priced anyway. But if you use that code right there, you'll save some money as well. And you'll also be supporting the channel, enabling me to continue doing what I'm doing. So let's go see the car. I've revealed some shocking upgrades I've actually done that far surpassed my expectations. As we all know, that car is a Cat D, having had fairly severe accident. I've also tracked down the original owner who's had that accident, so I'm gonna get him on the channel very soon, but that would have been flagged up my car vertical port had I done that. Anyway, let's go. As if by magic then, I am here at RPM at Technic and you see over my shoulder there, my GT3 RS. It is back on the channel, ladies and gents. So let's go through the upgrades and I cannot wait to show you what's been done and get out on the road in this car. As always with RPM, there is a Carrera GT here. There's usually several, but today there is just the one. One's enough. Uh, unbelievable car. I'm not going to show you around the back of it because you'll see the license plate and it's a client's car. So that is not fair. There's a silver Carrera GT. It's always a joy to see one of these. I get excited seeing them, even though I have one of my own in one of my houses. Anyway, through here. Today on the wrist, we've got Bulgari Sketch On, limited to, I think it was 200 pieces. 10th anniversary piece from Bulgari. Titanium, very, very slim, very, very comfortable. Love that. Yeah. Anyway, through here, we have got my 997 Turbo up on the ramp. I've already filmed a full video with this car, going through what this car needs, what it wants, because I'm doing a road trip in this car, which I may well have announced. That video may well be live on the channel by now. I don't know yet. Uh, but that is having some work ready for its trip away. So stay tuned for that. I'll go check it out after this video. Before also we get going, I do want to show you what they've got here. So I've been hanging around here for a little while and I've been nosing around. I've seen some very, very nice bits in it. What I love about RPM, they've always got such love for the 996s and 997s. They look after so many of them and they take these into stock all the time. So a lovely 996 GT3 there. They are looking so well. One of my favorite things about the 996 GT3s are these incredible wing-backed bucket seats. They obviously change them when they got into the 997, but this is an absolute stonker. And of course, should you so wish, you can now put CarPlay in one of these as well. Official Porsche unit, very, very cool. GT3 with a manual handbrake, fantastic. We've got a 911 Turbo here, and I think I've seen this on their Instagram. Yes, it is the same one. It's the one with the CXX lime green calipers and other CXX options. So lime green stitching inside as well. A very rarely optioned car, that is, Probably isn't a better daily than that. We've also here got a 911 Turbo S as well in a wonderful shade of blue. Nice contrasting interior as well. All the bits, carbon interior, the whole lot. That is an absolute screamer. They are such value for money. Unbelievable. Sunroof as well. They are rocket ships, these things. I think these are both just coming to stock. We've got a GT4. We've got a 996 GT3 RS, which I think are super, super value for money and only going one way. There are not many of these cars at all. I can't remember the exact figures. Again, wing back bucket seats, this time in Alcantara with harnesses. We've got a 993. I think that's a Carrera S with red interior. I actually know the previous owner of this car. And I keep telling him every single day that he's a complete prat for selling it, to which he agrees. And through here as well, we've got some other bits and bobs. We've got customers waiting in there, so I don't want to run around my camera too much, annoying everyone. But I suggest you go and check out RPM's Instagram, because a lot of the stock that come in hits their Instagram. It doesn't even go on AutoTrader or anything like that. It doesn't last that long. So go and check it out. They have such a fast, quick turnover of... Fast, quick? They've got such a turnover of stock here. They go through so many cars. And we've got 996 Turbo there. Is that Turbo or is it GT2? It's a Turbo. Turbo. That's my feet on the floor, by the way, before you think it's flatulence. That's manual as well. Cash. Let's go back in then. Two videos today. 
double churn today because my 997 GT3 RS is back. It's back in one piece. It's ready to take home. I'm actually going to have to put it on a transporter because I'm taking the turbo back and the turbo is going abroad with me. However, the GT3 RS is back and we have gone for considerable upgrades over and above what I mooted last time round. So we'll go under the car then. So underneath the floor panel here, we've got brand new subframe and that is all absolutely spankers OEM from Porsche. Can't show you that because the panels are back on. However, the main thing that's been done, we have got KW Club Sports in there. So they've actually got Rose top mounts and brand new dampers in there. So that's on the front and all of that is absolutely straight and running true on the Geo. New arms have been put in where they've been needed and it's all absolutely straight, which is fantastic. We'll go around the back. It's slightly easier to see here but all fully adjustable. And they are the KW Club Sports as well. So you can adjust them, you make them tighter, softer, higher, lower. And we'll go back outside now. Because you'll see the ride height I've gone for is pretty much the same as stock. Porsche know how to fill an arch from stock. So you'll see that the ride height is pretty much the same as stock. In fact, I got them to do OEM ride height. Because I don't track this car, I've got it set up for fast road use. And anyone that knows anything about cars know that KW are the absolute best in the biz. And in actual fact, this Carrera GT is in here because it is going for a set of KWs as well. I actually don't know if they're V5s or not. I can't tell. I really can't tell what these KWs are. The majority of the Carrera GT owners on the group that I'm on are putting KWs in their car. They are the best in the biz. Anyway, so we've got KW Club Sports in the RS. We've got brand new subframe, we've got new mounts, we've got everything replaced. We've also had some upgrades done to the brakes. So we've got new hoses, new lines, they've been bled, and we've got new pads in there as well. They're only steels, but my kind of complaint before was that the turbo brakes, my 907 turbo, which is through in the other room, the brakes actually felt better on that than they did on this. So the brakes on here needed some love, which they've also got. The only other thing, let's come around the back here. I didn't actually point out in the video. I'm going to go up, up on high. <laughs> going up here. The only other thing I didn't point out was the rear screen was all spidered and mottled and horrible. It was like crazy paving, particularly when the sunshine hit it. The rear screen, because it's like this uh, thin kind of perspex, um, it needed replacing. I think just over time and heat and whatnot, it just got that kind of horrible glazed finish. It looked like it was smashed from certain angles. So it's got a brand new Porsche screen in it. Look at that zoom function on the camera, ladies and gents. High tech stuff here. But interestingly, or not that interestingly, maybe I'm a moron, I didn't know this. You can actually claim on insurance for your rear screen as well as your windscreen. So Porsche wanted six or seven grand just for that rear screen there, which I thought, well, I think I can put up with a broken screen for that money, actually. Um, so someone pointed out, actually, you can claim on your insurance and it just goes through your windscreen cover. So anyone in the same predicament, I know it's quite a niche issue, um, but it applies to any car, um, your rear screen um, is covered by your insurance as well. So uh, massive, massive shout out to my insurer for sorting that. And they will actually settle up direct with RPM. I don't even need to pay for that. RPM will pay for it and the insurer will settle up directly with RPM. So I don't even need to find six grand to cash flow it either, which is all very well and good in this day and age. So there we go, some useful consumer advice for you there. Um, but yeah, it was broken and my insurer replaced it um, under windscreen cover, which is absolutely fantastic. But what an angle, what a thing this car is. Obviously got the lightweight JCR exhaust in it as well. And I can't wait to get driving, which will of course be a separate video with lots more adverts. So then let's come down again. I have rightly said so many times that of all the cars that come and go on the channel, this is one of the ones that will be in the keep net indefinitely. I'll hold on to this thing as long as I can afford to do so. I absolutely love it. I think it's fantastic. And it's kind of like a, a mainstay, like a kind of cornerstone of my channel. I know it's not incredibly, incredibly popular, but I think this car epitomizes the sort of thing that I'm all about and what I absolutely love about Porsche, what I love about 911s, and actually one of my favorite period of car production. It's 2010, 2011 car, and I do think that era gave us some of the best naturally aspirated and kind of race derived 
road cars. And if you missed the start of the video, all my other videos with this car where we went through it being a Cat D and previously crashed, make sure you don't inadvertently buy a Cat D car with Car Vertical. Use my code TGE and you will save on your Car Vertical report, which will go through all sorts of hidden nasties, which I explained at the start of the video. But make sure you use my code TGE because it will save you some money and it will also potentially save you from buying a Cat D you didn't know about. I actually knew about this one, but if I didn't, it would have been picked up by a car vertical report, which I run on all my cars. Very noisy place to be. For now, ladies and gentlemen, do subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Let me know in the comments where you'd like to see me drive this next, and stay tuned for more Roadster meets as well, because I'll be doing some meetups very soon on there as well. For now, I will see you at Le Mans Classic, potentially, if this video goes out before then, in my 997 Turbo, so I'll see some of you there. For now, toodle pip, and I hope you're all well. Bye.